Okay, so here we've got um, a Chinese counterfeit guitar, and I'm not going to sort of talk about whose it is, um, but I'm just going to kind of spend a couple of minutes going over it. It's a copy of a, a Gibson. No, no, I'll try again. Rewind. It's a copy of a Martin, um, and in many ways it looks quite pretty. Okay, it also has a very beautiful sound. No doubt about it, it does sound pretty. However, um, there are all kinds of problems. You just saw one of them there, by the way. One of them was that all of these tuners are hanging on by crappy uh, screws and they've come loose. So I'm going to tighten them up and replace those screws with decent screws that might hold it in. The other one that you can't see here was the nut that I took off was the, well, not the nut, the fingerboard is wider here than it is here. So I've had to put a new nut on, but I've also shimmed it out with some copper at this end to basically bring the nut out that way to retain the correct intonation. On top of that, the neck comes down here and has a big plateau, um, which is awful. So I've had to actually use the banana fret leveling technique to gently scoop out that hump. I can't, well, I could spend a couple of hundred quid refretting it, taking the, um, frets right out and then sanding <clears throat> the hump out of the fingerboard and go back in with hopefully a new uh, a new flat fingerboard but you still got no guarantee on this Chinese made guitar that it's gonna um, it's gonna last so I've had to um, I've used the, the basically the uh, banana trust rod leveling file that I use and the great thing about it is is that say you've got a sort of a problem neck like that um, I, I showed this on my Facebook site page the other day. The the banana does a kind of cute thing. This is very extreme, right? And it sort of basically takes away the congested bit. Well, it doesn't take it away, but it it helps to. That's an extremely exaggerated version, but it can actually create enough room for the strings to move and play. And that's what I've done here. So for a relatively small amount of effort, um, this thing should play again. So just to give you a look at it from the, uh, a distance, it should be safe on the on the deck there. The Martin Chinese copy actually sounds nice when it's um, playing amazingly. So there's a new nut on there, and you can see. Look at that. That isn't a mistake. That's deliberate. Okay, that's the only way it's going to work. Um, but I'm going to basically. I've now um, obviously I've had to level the frets out, so I'm now going to polish out the frets on this, and then I'm going to um, uh, restring it. <clears throat> I'm going to put a, a strap button in the side. I've just got to double check online to see which side it is on Martin's. Um, paint a tiny bit of lacquer on here I had to flatten this out this surface area because it was wonky as well everything about the headstock was a mess but you know um the customer hasn't paid that much money for this thing so uh with this work it will play beautifully nicely but there you go um i know this will get the old thumbs down um i'm not i'm not uh what's the word i'm not agreeing with the counterfeit thing at all. In fact, I actually think counterfeits are a bad idea. Oh, sorry. Hang on a second. All told. Because they're just copying somebody else's thing. And it's in an international market. Uh, it's just, you know, it's not it's not a great thing to do. Mm, God. <laughs> what an absolute mess that is. If this doesn't work, I might have to fill and redo, but let's see if these little ones here, a bit longer, may hold this thing in. Yeah, so um, I'm not I'm not for counterfeits at all. I do not condone them. That's the word I was looking for. Um, but, you know, nor, nor what I don't do when a customer uh, makes a, a decision and they bring me a guitar, I'm certainly not going to second guess them and... and uh, criticize any of their decisions it's entirely up to them since they it's entirely legal to buy them whether you agree with it or not so just in case you you want to rant at me anybody i don't agree with it um you know and i certainly 
I've seen lots of people online in the past agreeing, you know, saying, oh, well, you know, it's Martin's fault for charging too much or Gibson, they should have done better customer service or better quality control and then other people wouldn't copy them and so on. It serves them right for being crap. No, it doesn't. You know, any company that spends a lot of money to set up in business, make a product, protect its its uh, intellectual property and, um, you know, manufacture that thing deserves to have the right to not be copied and ripped off by somebody in a different place if we're all playing in a global market. Sometimes we don't quite know whether we are or not. Let's just hold this down with the other hand. Um, but, so I don't, I don't agree with it. And I always think when I see someone commenting like that, I think, you know, it's quite easy to think that until the point in your life where you create something, come up with maybe a an app or a piece of software or whatever, you know, innovation you might make. And then you sort of naturally come to a point where you find that you want to protect it for your, you and your employees that you employ and provide livelihoods for and so on and so forth. And then you realize that somebody in a faraway country is copying it. And suddenly, quite naturally, you, you change your, your uh, take on it. Um, but there we go. Okay, that was, that was a quick video. The fake things, um, you know, even little things like this are not at all, um, not that kind of or slightly worrying. You know, you can you can put. <laughs> I mean, how much? Ta -da. I mean, you know, I don't, I think there's obviously a little joint in there, so I don't think it necessarily has to close all the way down, but it just doesn't, it's not confidence inspiring. Okay, there you go, a little uh, copy counterfeit. Uh, sounds nice. Hopefully after this it's going to play you nice too.